Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of the Flappy Bird project on NP Station. So today, let's go ahead and start coding in this Flappy Bird project. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a pipe class. So we'll have our uh, class pipe here. So by the name of this class, you can tell that in this, we're going to be creating our pipes and placing them on our screen. So let's start off by creating two variables, one called gap, which should be equal to 200, another called velocity, which should be equal to five. So this uh, gap variable is gonna, you know, it's basically saying how much space there is in between our pipes. So that'll be 200 pixels. They'll be 200 pixels apart. And we'll also have our velocity variable, which is how fast our pipes will move. Now let's go ahead and create an init. So in, um, so init underscore underscore, and in the parentheses, we'll have our self as well as our X. So here we're setting the height of the tubes, right? And the height and the placement of these tubes will be completely random each time. So that's why we're gonna have our self.x to equal x, and we'll have our self.height to equal zero. So we want the height and length of our tubes, our pipes, to be random each time for each one of them and each time they come on the screen. If they were the same, it would probably be, it would be a pretty boring game to play as the player would just have to have their bird move in the same y-axis. So that's why we need to change it up, the height. So now let's create two variables, one called top and one called self.bottom. They'll both be equal to zero. So these variables are keeping track of where the top and the bottom of the pipes will be drawn on our screen. We'll also do a self.pipe um, underscore image. So, or sorry, underscore top. And here we'll have our pygame.transform.flip. Let me fix that. Transform.flip. And we'll have in the parentheses our pipe underscore image as well as um, false and true. Okay, so after our pipe underscore top, we'll also set our pipe self dot pipe underscore bottom. And this will be equal to pipe underscore image. All right, so now we're done with that. Oh, well, let me go ahead and explain this here. So as you know, from our images folder, which you should have downloaded, it has all the images we'll be using for this Flappy Bird project. And here you can see that we only have one pipe image and we need two to come on our window. So that's why we need to flip this pipe the other way around so that we can put it on the top of our window. So that's why we're using our flip here. And that's all we're doing. We're just flipping it upside down because we have to put it on the top of our uh, Flappy Bird window. Okay, let's do a self.pass. Let me take, take out that caps lock. So self.pass, this will be equal to false. And this is for if our bird has already passed one of the pipes, and that is basically for collision purposes. We'll also have our self.set underscore height. And um, this method will define where the top and bottom pipes are and how tall they are. So let's also, speaking of self, under, uh, self height, let's set our another function, self set underscore height there we go and we'll have our self in the parentheses okay so here we need to get a random number for where the top of our pipe should be so we'll have our self dot height to equal random uh, dot rand range and it will have 50 and 450 we'll also set our self dot top variable to equal self dot height um, and that would be equal to self dot pipe underscore top dot get underscore height. There we go. And we'll also put, uh, have our self dot bottom is equal to self dot height 
plus self.gap. So that gap is coming from that first variable that we created. Um, that's the gap between each of the pipes. Okay, so now we're done with our set underscore height function. Let's move on to our next function, which is move. And here we'll have our self in the parentheses as well. So all we're doing here, pretty simple, self.x minus equals self.velocity. So all we're doing here is we're moving our pipe to the left just a little bit, just fine tuning that move the pipe movement. All right, so that's all for the move function. Now we'll create another function called draw. And here we'll have our self and our window. So here, as you can tell from the name of the function, we're drawing our pipes on the screen. So let's put use our win, window dot blit, and in the parentheses we'll have our self uh, dot pipe underscore top, and in another set of parentheses we'll have our self dot x and our self dot top. We'll set another. Um, we'll need this. We'll just copy and paste this as it is very similar, except we'll change the self. We'll change the top to bottom and this top to bottom as well. All right, so here again, we're just drawing the pipes on our screen. Now we are going to go into the most difficult method of this project, which is collide. This is where we're gonna learn more kind of about pixel perfect collision. So let's create a, very, a function called collide and we'll have ourself and our bird in the parentheses. So let's first start off by creating our a bird underscore mask variable, and it would be equal to bird dot get underscore mask. So this line of code, let me just explain it a little bit. Each of our objects in our game will have a mask. So a mask is basically, you can see that, let's just take this bird, uh, bird image here. So just to visualize a box around that bird image. That's kind of the mask for that bird. So there's gonna be a mask for all three of these bird images as well as the pipe, right? The pipe will also have like a square around, a rectangle around it, and this will also have, the base will also have a mask. So that's what we're setting there. And now we need to create a mask for the top and bottom pipes. So let's set the top underscore mask to equal pygame dot uh, mask, I think that's dot mask dot um, from underscore surface, and we'll have our self dot pipe underscore top, there we go. And I'll copy and paste this as well since we have to do the same thing for our bottom pipe. So let me change this top to bottom, and this will also be self uh, dot pipe underscore bottom. Okay, now we need to calculate something called an offset. This is how far away these masks are from each other. So let's have our top underscore offset for our top pipe, which will be equal to self dot x uh, minus bird dot x, not equals, minus per dot x. And we'll also have our self dot top minus round and in parentheses we'll have our bird dot y so I will copy and paste this since we need to do the same thing for our bottom pipe let's change that to bottom underscore offset and everything else will actually no we have to change this to bottom as well all right and everything else will remain the same Cool, so now that we're done with that, we need to check if these masks collide with each other. We also need to find their point of collision. And this tells us uh, the point of overlap between the bird mask and the uh, pipe using the offset, right? So if they collide with each other, the two masks would overlap. So that's why we'll create a B underscore point variable for our bottom point. This will be equal to bird underscore mask uh, dot overlap and in parentheses we'll have our bottom underscore mask and our bottom underscore offset. So I will copy and paste this 
because we'll put it create our t underscore point variable this will be top mask and this will be top offset all right so that again is checking if the masks collide with each other now we need to check if either of these points actually exist so to do that we'll create an if statement so that would be if t underscore points or b underscore points and then we'll have our return I fixed that return true or sorry return yeah, actually, that's right. Return true. So this is uh, basically telling us that we are colliding with the other object. And if not, we are going to return false. And that means that we are not colliding. So there, these points do uh, did not exist. All right. So after our return false, click make sure that there's no indentation. Here, we're done. So now we're done with our pipe class. All right but now we have another class to do which is our base class so here we are going to be dealing with our base image so this image right here is going is the base so it's going to be on the bottom of our window so this will also be moving to the left of our screen um, I don't know if I mentioned it in the beginning of this video but all of the objects on our window except for our bird move to the left of our screen. So our bird is actually staying in the same X position. It's just moving up and down. That too, the user is controlling the bird's movement. But everything else, so the base will be moving to the left of our window. So the um, ending will look really cool because this green strip that you see here with the stripes will look like it's moving. So it's gonna look really cool. Um, let me just go ahead and explain the method that will be doing for moving this pipe so or sorry base and so instead of having an infinite number of these base images during the game that will you know come on 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 the window we're just going to be having two base images so we'll have one and another so let's say that this whole thing is our window and this base image will start will be on the screen but it will start moving to the left and right behind it, there's going to be another one which will be moving at the same exact, exact velocity. So as soon as this base image is off the window, it's going to cycle back around to the right side of our window and come back. So it's going to be like a cycle and it's going to keep looping through the base two base images until the game is over. So that was a lot of talking. How about we go ahead, create our uh, velocity variable which would be 5 we'll set our width to equal our base underscore image um, dot get underscore height we'll also have our another variable called image which would just be base underscore image all right so let's create another init and in the parentheses we'll have our self and our y and here we'll set ourself.y to equal y. And now we need to create two variables. So self.x1, which would be 0, and self.x2, which will equal to self.width. So what these two variables are saying is basically we're going to start with one of our base images at the x position 0 and the other will be directly behind that one right like i mentioned these base images are going to keep on cycling on the window so that's all for our init we'll also create a variable or sorry function called move and we'll have our self in the parentheses so here we need to move these base images uh, with the velocity. So let's go ahead do that. Same thing for self.x2 minus equals self.velocity. All right, that's it for our move. Uh, that's it for the, you know, moving them with the velocity. Now we need to check if one of the base images are completely off of the screen, right? And if so, we need to cycle it back. So let's create an uh, if statement for this so we'll have our self.x1 plus self.width is less than zero then we'll have our self.x1 is equal to self 
dot x2 plus our self dot width. So this again is just checking if that first base image is off the screen and if so we're going to cycle it back. Now let's do the same thing except for our other base image so self dot width less than zero. I could have copied and pasted this. Uh, self dot x2 is equal to self dot x2 or sorry x1 plus self dot uh, width. And I think I made a mistake here. This should be x2. Uh, that's why, yeah, this is x1. All right, so again, we're doing the same thing as a previous uh, if condition, except for the different base image. Now we need to draw them on the screen. We need to draw the base images on the screen, right? So let's create a variable. I don't know why I keep saying variable. I mean to say function. So def draw and in parentheses self and we'll also use our window. Okay, here we need to draw the base. So again, we're going to use our blitz. And if you don't remember from our previous videos, the blitz just means draw. So that's why we're using it to draw the base image on our screen. So I will just copy and paste this as we need it. And again, for our X2, and everything will remain the same. All right, guys, so you have officially completed the third part in the Flappy Bird project. That was a whole lot of coding. We created two classes, um, a pipe class, if I could find that, there it is. So this is all that we did. You can see this highlighted portion is all the code that we did in today's video. We created a pipe class and as well as our base class. So great job. Make sure to stay tuned on MP Station for the next Flappy Bird video and there will be some book reviews coming up as well. So stay tuned guys, stay safe, keep reading and keep coding and I'll see you all next time on MP Station.